Father, thank you for bringing us to another day, giving us another chance at life, Lord. We ask that you please allow us to take heed to this gathering and to express ourselves in a loving, heartfelt manner, Lord. We ask you to please protect us, continue to guide us, and give us the strength to live through your light, Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Keith Lowey, Crystal Lowey, Lowey yeah. thank you for correcting me, and Keith Lowey, thank you praise for God, me. yes, praise God so much for you coming, and we wanted you to share with the world and whoever God sends to see there, the power of God to transform marriages. Today we're going to focus on marriages outside of God and marriages inside God, praise his name, and the transforming power that God is and able to, to give to any two people yeah. that are married, that are willing, willing to turn from their own ways and the ways of the world yes. and turn to the ways of the Lord and receive the gift of marriage the way he created it to be that we're all looking for, praise God, but sometimes we look for it in the wrong places and there's only one place to look for it, right? Yeah. And where's that place? That God, our God, Yahweh, Jesus, Amen. praise God, glory to his holy name. I wanted to read a scripture, and then I'm going to ask our beloved friends here um, a few questions, and they can lead us through their journey as the Holy Spirit leads them. But The scripture says in Matthew 19, verse 6, because I like to base everything on the word of God, because that's where the deliverance, the truth, the power, the help, and the healing is. And it says, Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. But therefore God has put together, let no man put asunder. So when the Lord puts man and woman together um, in marriage, they become no longer two, but they're one. And God is working to create this oneness, not only in the flesh, but also the oneness in the Spirit of God. And we know that outside of the Spirit of God, we can run into a lot of turmoil and um, they create our own chaos by operating in our own thinking, in our own ways, our own emotions, anger, retaliation, bitterness, nagging, whatever it may be. Praise God versus turning it over yeah. to the, the way and the word of the Lord so that nobody, no devil, nobody can separate and, and, and divide a marriage, destroy a marriage, which is what Satan wants to do. So Keith, I wanted to ask you because I know like in our counseling, like we went through, um, a journey as to um, how you were raised because believe it or not the way we're raised can unknowingly affect the way we relate to each other in marriage rightly or wrongly sometimes if we've had a bad example and we copy it it can affect our marriage sometimes if we have a bad example and then decide we're not going to do it it can help our marriage too but it depends on the person and if they you know which way they go so with you share with us the way you were raised and how you think it may have affected your your marriage. I was brought up in a home with a mom from America and my father was from Liberia. Um, Liberia is in Africa, uh, West Africa, um, but uh, the culture is pretty male dominated. Mm -hmm. So of course my father brought that heritage here uh, inside of their marriage. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of times he was very dominant to my mom, uh, verbally, physically, uh, both sometimes. So when you say dominant, you mean like dominant in an oppressive, abusive way? Uh, a lot of times, yes. Yeah. Is yes. that what you mean? Um, yes, that's what I mean. Um, now, he loved my mother in his own way, but for the most part, I saw my my mother submitting to his aggression uh not really to uh submitting in respect or it wasn't like a communication of respect between the two of them where they both right. were like in balance he was dominating in an oppressive way and not so much that the submissiveness but the she she was controlled she didn't have her own yeah contribution to make. Many he, times. He, yeah, yeah. Yeah, many times. Yeah. Her voice wasn't heard. Right. And, yeah. Right. 
and uh, he was the same way with us as well as his children. Okay. Uh, you know, so it did show me that uh, men are the head of the household, but it did not show me that as the head of the household, you're in service uh, of your household, and in that service comes love. Uh, and I learned that much later, you know, um, <laughs> probably uh, much of it when I met you. Uh, but in So my a question, did you transfer that image that you saw of your father in your initial relationship with Crystal in your marriage? I did. Um, mm -hmm. I was not physical at all. Mm -hmm. uh, that was one area where, as an adult, I said, I will not do that, you know. Um, mm -hmm. It, it really damaged me seeing my mother. It hurt uh, you as a kid. Absolutely. Yeah. So that was that something much I knew. definitely did so not bring yeah. over to my marriage. But uh, my way of uh, doing what I learned from my father was just more so um, uh, aggression uh, during arguments, maybe, uh, where I would uh, kind of try to out talk Crystal instead of, instead of listening and speaking in love. Uh, which, like I said, uh, you were able to teach me a lot of that yeah, during our sessions. Yeah, that's true. Let's turn with that thought um, to Ephesians chapter 5. I'd like to, I feel led right now to um, include the Word of God right here. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Praise God. And then 1 Corinthians talks about let the husband render due benevolence to the wife and likewise also the wife so there's a mutual benevolence speaking of between the husband and the wife there's a benevolence there's a mutual respect there's a mutuality not one dominating over the other praise god and then while you're while we're on that point i think it's really important to um discuss in first peter let's go to first peter because that's a scripture that is like really, really abused in marriage. I mean, it says, in the same way, um, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1, in the same way you wives must accept the authority of your husbands, An another version says, um, submit it to your husbands. Then even if some refuse to obey the good news, your godly lives will speak to them without any words. They will be won over by the observing of your pure and reverent lives. That's a such a powerful scripture of promise, but um, down through the years, I think the Christian um, church and some preachers have misinterpreted that, the misinterpretation that, that men, because they are to lead, were to lead in, 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 in domineering um, abusiveness instead of leading in benevolence and leading in love, and that the wife was to submit to the authority, praise God, and that's true, but we submit, we're submitting hopefully to a benevolent, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, the design is that we would be submitting to a benevolent um, husband who is also submissive right. to the Holy Spirit, so therefore he would be um, relating to the wife in humility, in kindness, in, in, in gentleness, in respect, and you would be doing it vice versa right. to your husband. So there's a mutual Holy Spirit gentleness and love that God wants to develop between a husband and wife, where the man is the head, but he doesn't abuse that head right. by being unkind and being um, abusive. Say, well, the Bible says, you know, I'm the, I'm the head. Yes, the Bible says that, but we don't want to um, abuse the Word of God. It's not a weapon. And we want to respect the Word of God, and we want to stand by the Word of God, because the Word of God works. We're not, we, we're not saying nothing against that, but it doesn't mean that we're, the wife is submissive like... Uh, like a, back in the day, I just get this image, you know, of African slaves being abused, you know, by, by, um, you know, the slave master. It's not that unkind, imbalanced um, misinterpretation mm -hmm. of the scripture that a lot of women have suffered and a lot of men have walked in. So we just wanted to clarify that, that the two people are both submitting to the Holy Spirit. They're both listening to the Holy Spirit. And they both bring their relationship to God through grace and peace to the table. Mm -hmm. So there's a mutual, there's a mutual respect, praise God, mm -hmm. that you're both children of God, you both have a relationship with God, and you both hear from the Lord, and so you can listen to each other and share your journey together in grace and kindness. 
and the wife can bring um, so much information from the Lord in her prayer life to her husband, and the husband can bring so much information to the wife, and they can confirm. And you know, there's that scripture that says, you know, um, where they, that when two pray together, you know, that um, the Lord is in the midst. And so you have your inbuilt prayer partner right there, glory to His holy name, where you can pray, you pray with one another. Oh, honey, I heard this from the Lord. Pray and and, and check and see, you know, confirm it, you know, yeah. pray with me. So that's what the Lord is looking for, this Christ loving his wife. I mean, quite, yeah, um, the husband loving um, his wife as Christ loved the church. And what did Christ do for the church? He sacrificed. Mm -hmm. There, okay, so the negative examples from your father, the abuse. Um, there are a lot of dysfunctional families um, in the Bible, so that's not unique. To, you know, having a dysfunctional family is pretty much universal. But the beauty of it is that whenever a human being within that family turns to the Lord, the whole household can be transformed. One example, remember, is Joseph, when his his um, brothers got jealous, right, and tried to kill him. Mm -hmm. So for so how dysfunctional can you get? I mean, right. That's totally dysfunctional. He forgave them. He forgave them, and he restored them back into the family, and he took care of them and their needs, right? And so that shows that our dysfunctional families, anybody that's in a dysfunctional family, if you get saved, praise God, you know, pray for your father, pray for the mother, pray for that sister or brother, whoever that person may be that's out of the way. Because one of the things about getting saved, when we come from a dysfunctional family, is that from our example, when we get saved and walk in the love and the humility, of Christ, our example can transform our family. Amen? Yeah. Little by little. Mm -hmm. With that, we'll turn to um, Crystal. We'll turn to Crystal. And I know, um, just remembering the counseling, there was drugs in the, in the relationship. There was an abuse of the finances not being used responsibly. You know, the Bible tells us to be a good steward. Mm -hmm. The money was used for foolishness and drugs, in, you know, in your use. Um, praise God. I remember... Um, the lack of trust, the, um, the lack of accountability, the disrespect, the independent woman. I'm just listing some before right. I get to you, that you wanted to do your own thing, go your own way, and that's it. So you were operating um, in, in, in some bad attitudes as well that you may have, and we'll give you a chance to you know, share that scene in your mother or your father from your, your childhood, praise God. And there are also um, sexual immorality, there was adultery um, that took place in the marriage, and praise God, glory to his holy name, and as um, Keith already mentioned, that lack of listening, that lack of honor and respect um, coming from the wife. So, Crystal, would you like to share um, with the world, um, when, when you first got married, the early years, how you were leaning to your own understanding, and, and how that brought that added to the self-destructiveness of the marriage. Yeah. But for God, if God hadn't have stepped in, amen, glory amen. to his holy name, that divorce was on the horizon, which is the devil's plan. Yes. But we rebuke divorce. I want to tell the world that God is not pleased with divorce. He hates divorce. And he said only for the hardness of um, the heart does he allow divorce, but he also says if you get divorced, if you get married again, you're in adultery, so you need to stay in that marriage and work it out. Right. So with that said, my darling beautiful mm -hmm. Christo, such a great help and assistance to me. I'm so thankful Thank for you. Praise yes. God. Yeah. Amen. Tell us a little um, about your journey in your marriage. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So just growing up, uh, marriage wasn't uh, well I had a stepfather when I was younger um, mm -hmm. that was the image that I was able to see of marriage between him and my mother um, but you know I was so young I'm just living in my own world I'm not really paying attention to how marriage should be or taking notes or anything like that but um, but what but what I was able to see was um, you know that they ended up divorcing and there is a lack of respect between the two of them um, and, and usually it was my mom who got the last word and you know she even admitted how she just had really bad anger issues um, my my stepdad was the more relaxed um, you know type of individual and I think growing up seeing that um, I definitely um, used those uh, I guess you could say Example. examples examples okay. in, in my marriage where um, 
you know, getting the, trying to get the last word or yelling and, and not being respectful and, and just, you know, my tone and my approach and just already having it made up in my mind that what I'm coming to my husband about is valid and, and of course, you know, he should be humble and, you know, apologetic for something, you know, not, not seeing my, how I'm looking. And not looking situation. at the moat in your own eyes. Exactly. Yeah. I think it's really interesting because a lot of us as young girls, um, unfortunately in America, um, the American woman is guided by the media, you know, to be that bodacious, bold, disrespectful, mm -hmm. independent, you know, I got the last say um, kind of person. In. Right. But how beautiful it is when we come to the Lord that we understand that we want God to have a last say. Exactly. We want right. God to be right, right. in us. Amen. Exactly. Yeah, it's not about yeah. feeling, it's not about being, you know, right. It's about uh, what's what's right under God. And I didn't really have uh, the teachings and the practice to go to God whenever there were any, you know, um, Disagreements, disagreements in our relationship or anything so you handled like it the way you saw Tension, your yeah you I handled yeah, it the way right. you saw your mom that exactly. was your example and you took that in kind of subliminally i guess you might Absolutely. say yeah. yeah i was a little different i wasn't so uh forward as my mom you know was but mm -hmm. still the way that i did it was keeping quiet and playing doing like the silent treatment you know mm -hmm. and i remember when <laughs> that that didn't work anymore mm -hmm. uh you know my husband so kind <laughs> you know he would always be so humble you know I would if anything I would have a sign you know give him the silent treatment and eventually you know within a day or whatever he would try to break break that mm -hmm. but then I remember when that stopped working and I remember when he said to me one day it had been almost like a week and I'm like he hasn't budged and, uh, and he looked at me and he said you always mad he was like you always got something to complain about you know and I was like you know, I was looking at myself and I'm just like, I didn't, I don't want to come off that way, you know, so that this isn't working. So now I need to start, you know, trying to communicate. So then when I try to communicate, I'm not saying the right things. And it's all about me, 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 yeah. um, or it's being re, you know, um, I, I'm reacting to what, you know, he, maybe he's saying or the tone that he's using again, instead of me. You're escalating it? Yeah. Escalating you know, and it. not, not saying let's pray in the moment. You know, I may go off to myself sometimes when I got really bad and pray, mm -hmm. um, but that's not really helping our relationship together because I'm praying for my own personal, you know, things, the things that I think I need to pray for at that time. Um, but, but yeah, so there's a lot of... So you had, you, you, you came into your marriage with um, um, that I want to win, I'm the, you know, I have the last say, mm -hmm. um, that example of... Um, I guess pride in, yeah, instead of humility, of a lot of pride. And then we want to talk about um, the drugs. Like, what part did that did that play in your in your marriage? Yeah. So just being being young and uh, and um, just not really having a, a source of, I guess, happiness. You know, um, I would just partake in different drugs and different, you know, and, and alcohol and things with, you know, my friends and just not thinking of it, you know, anything that I'm, that I'm doing bad, you know, it was just something that I didn't really see as, you know, myself spiraling down um, from How did it. that affect your marriage? Um, um, it just, you know, personally, I just feel like we, it just made it, made our marriage less uh, serious, taken seriously, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and when it came to money, um, I have a question because, you know, I mean, a lot of couples where the financial part of the marriage is not being handled correctly. Did you sometimes, for instance, use some of the money that should have been paid on a bill for your drug? Something was off because you were spending money on yeah, drugs? Yeah, money wasn't like being spent wisely. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely not. Yeah, we didn't, we weren't really focused on saving and planning Just, ahead mm -hmm. and then finding ourselves having to ask for help and then seeing how that involved um, made just exposed things in our marriage um, with our family so now they're involved you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying and now they're giving us their you know opinion on on what we should do so that's another thing in marriage there are times in our lives you know um, that our families our, our parents can speak negative against the husband, mm -hmm. you know, or the wife. And so 
there are a lot of times when it's wise to seek advice from an objective person, kind of leave the family out of it, because families, though they may mean well, there are a lot of people, unfortunately, that are divorced today because they let their the negativity of their mother or father or somebody get in their ear, you right. know, a friend or whatever. And so we want God's word to be in our ear. Right. We, when we're, for marriages, when, when the two people are having issues, you know, I always like to encourage people, unless you have really godly parents mm -hmm. that are really going to minister to you the word of God and encourage you that whatever it is is going on, God is able to fix it if you turn it over to him. Unless you have those kind of parents, that's fine. But right. if you don't have those kind of parents and they're going to take sides and bring division, leave them out of it. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, yeah. leave them out of it. Yeah. Praise it's, it, God. It's best to leave them out of it. Yeah. Um, it's because sometimes it's not always blatant that your family is on is just on your side and trying to shun you away from your husband. Sometimes it's it's uh it's it's subtle, you mm -hmm. know, um, because I, I remember that, you know, I didn't have anybody. You were the first person who really vouched for our marriage and showed us, you know, through God's word how our marriage can survive. Praise and God. and it's meant to survive. It's meant to survive. It Amen. just um it just really made the feeling that we already had deep down inside grow and stand out because we wouldn't leave each other. I mean, we stayed together. We separated for a short period of time and almost divorced, but mm -hmm. it was 10, was it almost 13 years at that point before that even happened. And we never had anyone standing up for our marriage. It was just me and my husband. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen Thank you, that. Jesus. That, that, is, that is a staple in our lives. Isn't um, that beautiful? I mean, I'm just, it's just so beautiful. I want to encourage anybody out there that, you know, you're being used by the Lord. You have an encounter with a married couple or whatever. How powerful it is, you know, just to be steadfast in the word, be true to the word, speak the truth to people's lives. Amen. Yeah. You know, praise God, because their lives can be transformed by the truth and, and by the word of God. Yes. You know, and each couple, one by one. Amen. Amen. Glory to his name. And so, um, Crystal, with your permission, you said that you didn't mind speaking about it. Let's talk about um, adultery. Mm -hmm. Because before we, before she shares that, because there are some marriages um, where the husband or the wife or both of them, have committed, been unfaithful sexually to one another. And many of them have gone on and gotten divorced. But do you know what? There are many that because of the grace, the power, and the intervention, mm -hmm. and the forgiveness and the healing of, of God, that that adultery is washed away, praise mm -hmm. God, and their marriage is restored and healed, and, and they learn how to how to keep themselves and, and, to, and, and to be faithful not only to God, but to be faithful to their husband and to be faithful to their wife in the joy of it, the joy of that faithfulness, the joy of that sexual, that intimate faithfulness that God has given you. This one man for you to give your body, your mind, your soul, and your share, and giving you this one wife and the preciousness of having mm -hmm. that, the becoming one flesh, yeah. you know, and the sin of sinning against that, you know, but the joy of learning how to be faithful to that covenant. Yeah. Praise God, glory to his name. Hosea chapter 3, and it reads, Then the Lord said to me, Go and love your wife again. Oh, I love that. Go and love your wife again, and we could change it. Go and love your husband again. Praise yeah. God. Don't walk away from the marriage because your wife has committed adultery. Don't walk away from your husband because your husband has committed adultery. The word of God is encouraging those in the kingdom of God that are married. Go and love your wife again. And even though she commits adultery with another lover, this will illustrate that the Lord still loves Israel, even though the people have turned to other gods and love to worship them. Praise God. Glory to his holy name. So this is an this is a demonstration of God's love on the cross that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life and that God, God's son Jesus, Yeshua died on the cross for all of our iniquities, for all of our sins and that we're all sinners and that just as he's calling Hosea to love his wife again in spite of her sin, 
who are we not to forgive one another? Mm -hmm. Because we've all sinned, and Jesus died on the cross for all of our sins to forgive us while we were yet in sin. Mm -hmm. And so th this example of Hosea taking his wife back after she's you know, committed adultery is an example of God's mercy, God's great mercy, God's great compassion towards all of us, those that are saved and those that are lost, that he's calling us to his forgiveness. He's calling us to his blood mm -hmm. to wash away our sins to give us another chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, Amen. so in our marriage, it's um, so ours is a little different. Um, mm -hmm. Prior to us getting married, um, I, I unfortunately stepped outside of our relationship uh, mm -hmm. physically, and I told my husband the truth. I, I was led to tell him the truth um, because I, I genuinely loved my husband and I wanted to uh, sever, you know, try to help any, any way that we could still have a friendship at least. Because uh, cause me and my husband, we actually were <laughs> friends when we were little kids. We were eight and nine, year old, near, nine years old, lost oh. touch for 13 years and yes. found each other again. And then we ended up literally when we found each other just being inseparable. And we were together for about 10 years before we actually got married. Um, but I, yeah, so I stepped outside of our, out of, outside of our relationship mm -hmm. and, um, and I told my husband and he was so gracious and kind to forgive me uh, for each time that I did it. It was three different occasions that I did what that. What a beautiful man of God, yeah, the Lord he, bless you. That, that's what he, that's something Thanks that God. made me love him even more because he, you know, told me there's a difference between, uh, you know, just being being in the act and doing something in the act, and there's a difference between actually wanting to have a relationship or an affair, you know, affair or just wanting it's to carry on. It's a difference between being taken over in the moment exactly. and that lust demon right. just controlling you in that exactly. moment and you not having the power and the wisdom how to bind and rebuke Satan exactly. and that demon of lust. Right, so yeah. hearing that from, you know, my husband, of course, at the time he wasn't, but we were so young, and I'm just hearing that from you know, someone's so young, and I'm just like, that just seemed bizarre to me, and, um, and so we, he, he, we were able to work through that, it, it was a, it was very hard, because the devil was definitely using that as a reason for us to, to not work, to not Did it bring it. a lack of trust? Absolutely, that was probably the, the number one thing that was holding us from being able to reach our highest potential, mm -hmm. uh, everything else we were inseparable in so many ways, but the trust really, really hindered us. And we still got married, you know, um, we still ended up getting married, uh, but things didn't change when it came to the trust, you know, because we weren't healing through God that way. So I have a question, because this is new to me. So in the, when you got married, so for those many, for those many years, it was that seed of, of lack of trust bumbling like under in yeah. under the surface in yeah. the marriage it was it was really bad because mm -hmm. i um i i completely changed you know my life i didn't uh, even think about you know cheating on my husband or cheating on keith at the time he was my husband but cheating on keith and then when we got married of course definitely not you know it's kind of like resetting the thought of um us starting over but the lack of trust the lack of trust still was, still still was there. there but at the same time i learned through you mm -hmm. uh teaching me that you can commit adultery in other ways um and that's through lust you know mm -hmm. and i remember because our trust was so bad and i was doing everything i could to personally i thought that i was doing everything i could to show him that you have nothing to worry about you know what i'm saying that's completely in the past mm -hmm. Um, I got to a point where I, I felt like I was darned if I did and I was darned if I didn't. So I remember just, you know, feeling like I was just more open to um, the idea of possibly doing it again. Come.